Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchas and I've got a terrible, terrible headache. It's probably Malaysian withdrawal syndrome. You get it if you don't see Malaysian people for too long. Very, very nasty stuff. Let's not go into details. Either way, you should be excited. Endless Legend is going to be released fully in just two days from now, as of the time of this recording, so it's probably even less time for you. Well, you might actually be watching this at the time when Endless Legend is already released, in which case, that's kinda swell, isn't it? Yeah, it truly is. However, there is one thing that we should also talk about. This guy looks pretty really strange from behind, like a robot or something, that's why I was confused. Anyway, there is something we do need to mention, or rather I need to mention, because as a direct result of this game almost being out. How come they are so close to winning this battle? Whatever, it's auto battle. I don't think this will be an exciting fight, so let's just do auto resolve and... Wow, my army is powerful. So either way, what I do want to mention is the fact that, yes indeed, uh, the game is about to be out, and when it is, then there will be another faction for everybody to play as. Now, what I'm obviously going to do is I'll start a new playthrough series for this specific faction, because this is what is expected of me, as I already have some experience of playing with this particular faction, and as such, as such I should provide some sort of guidelines for people that are entirely new to the upcoming faction, so that they can play as said faction more efficiently and optimally, especially since it is not actually a very easy faction to play as. At the same time, I also do not want to end this video cast, so I'll, I'll simply do... Come on, why did you not split? I'll, so I'll simply do what I did before. I'll have two playthroughs going on at the same... Ah, those other guys don't have enough movement, I think. Alright, so I'll split you somewhere else then. So, okay. Why didn't my mask have to stop working just now? I just started recording! That's not time for technical difficulties. I really need to get... Oh, 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 there we go. I'm holding my mouse USB cable right now, just so that it sticks where it's supposed to. Now let go. Okay, it still, still works. Let's not touch it too much. <laughs> let's not move my mouse, that's a good idea. Anyway, so what I'm trying to say is very simple. I just have two playthroughs going on at the same time. Now the playthrough for the new faction will obviously have the priority because it is what the people will want to see more than what you're seeing right now. Yes, Necrophages are awesome. Yes, I do like this playthrough. Yes, it is fun to watch. I mean, hopefully it is. It is fun to play at the very least. But the new faction will be far more important to showcase, to explain, and so on and so forth. And I'll be one of the very few people that will actually have some knowledge of said faction once it comes out. So it is important for me to prioritize the upcoming faction more so than this current playthrough. Not to worry, though. As I have proven with uh, previous playthroughs, I will obviously not abandon this one, I'll simply continue it at a slower pace. Which at the moment I have to admit is not exactly super fast. Oh, go away. But that is of course as a result of me having to test the game thoroughly before it is actually released and also a result of many many other different things. Now the game slightly broke. And that is a result because something weird happened. The man in gods is now gone from my queue. I cannot entirely explain why this happened. I'm slightly surprised myself. As you can see, I also do not have the meat folder, common meat, whatever. Something, something ability that reduces my dust expenditure on units and structure. No, just units. Yeah, my faction um, technologies appear to be gone. Which is probably a result of this playthrough starting in a previous patch and continuing into the next patch, which always generates some kind of problems in any every game ever. This time it's something I didn't really expect. I don't know where the Manic Gods went. I guess they're not at the Manic anymore, they just kinda forgave about us. Forgot about us, rather. And kind of ignore us. That's kind of mean, to be entirely honest with you. Especially because this uh, technology was actually quite crucial to me. Because, do you remember how I talked about you not being not supposed to actually get any of those central market or bread and circuses technologies you were able to do that or rather not to get those technologies as an echo Age player because of the mining gods because when you have big cities or when you conquer new cities that are big you can use this ability sacrifice your own population and regain happiness this way and because of the amount of food that you'll gain from your boosters you can usually do that and not cry too much about the fact that you're wasting quote-unquote your population 
which is a really good idea. It allows you, it gives you enough time to just sacrifice a couple of population, and because each demand, use of demanding gods lasts for several turns, unless your city is really small, using it just once or maybe two turns is usually enough to get a bunch of borough streets, especially if you conquer a city that already has a bunch of borough streets. So after using it a few times, you should be able to create a minimal size triangle, which is three by three triangle, which I'm starting to make over here, as you can see. And after you get that, you no longer need to use the mining gods because your city will start not requiring that much approval anymore. And soon enough, after you create this four by four triangle, it will actually start generating a lot and lot of approval. This is the true and real strength of the Necrofaders. It is the happiness, because although you start by having some problems with it, like I do right now, my empire is... You're not content, you're happy. Uh, empire? I mean, if you want to be content with this approval value, that's okay, that's a bug, by the way. But either way, even though I right now have some happiness problems, or should have at the very least, it is to be expected and can be combated with demanding gods, and after a while you will no longer need to be using this because you have plenty of happiness from very efficient triangles. Keep in mind, necrophages can build the triangle type of structures, towns, more efficiently than any other faction in the game, which is something that you should abuse to the maximum of your possibilities. It is a very effective strategy and you should never ever forget about it. Alright then. So that being said, what do I want to do right now? Well, obviously finish off the Broken Lords. I'll gain a lot of cities, however, that I didn't necessarily want to keep. Zade, I'm almost certainly going to burn down. What is within this region, the Zade region? Uh, I don't even know, because it's right there. So it's mostly hidden from me. But I probably want to burn the city down. It's not even in a good spot. It is exactly where uh, you know the region ends, so it's not getting bonuses from almost any towns aside from those ones. So what's the point of having this city? It's also fairly small. Seriously, no point in having it. I'm just going to burn it down. Adikina I'm going to keep. It does have Hans villages. The city is not in the best spot ever, I have to admit, because there are unspotted ruins that block the way towards the moss thingy, moss palace. However, there's a lot of rivers nearby, which is a pretty good deal, and I can still create an okay triangle over here, even if it's 3x3. I can make it a partial 4x4 triangle, which will be good enough, and then continue expanding along the rivers. And more importantly, I will have those haunts, and haunts are pretty good units because of the chain landing. Even though chain landing has been nerfed as it should have been. Sangor, uh, I'm in two minds if I should keep it or not. It is only three population city, uh, but and it doesn't really give me access to that much. What I'll probably do is try to see if. Oh wait, there is glass steel in here. Do I have glass steel deposit anywhere else? Let's have a very quick look. Yes, I do. So it's not my only source of glass steel, and the city itself, it is built on three anomalies, isn't it? There's one, there's two, there's three. And it's not a very bad location, I have to admit that there are more anomalies nearby. Especially if I get a hero that gives me bonuses from anomalies, this could end up being a decent city. Let's have a quick at the Fitzy values. Fitzy values, well, they are kind of decent. Not too much food production. But again, this is something I can very easily offset as part of me being an Echo Fages. There's some dust, there's some science over here, actually quite a lot of science. I kinda like this region, I'm going to keep it I think. It's a choice that you could argue about, but it's not necessarily a bad choice per se. Now this army is probably going to get killed by the Star Wars, so what, what I want to do is minimize the damage. Firstly, this Necodrone is way too valuable to be lost in such a way, so I'm going to use it as a, a very very expensive scout, but keep it out of harm's way. I wanted to send the Necrodrones to this area because those armies, while numerous, lack the real source of damage that Necrodrones bring. However, what I can do is reassign this hero to one of said, to one of those armies, and Kairos can deal quite a hefty amount of damage to pretty much anything and anyone. He's not only a good tank, he's also a good damage dealer. Because let's have a look, look at his stats, 70 damage, yeah, that's pretty good. So let's have him over here and go ahead and assault the city already. I'm going to use my... Draken hero because, well, Karius is going to gain experience from this battle in either way because he will join the battle, the enemy has a hundred fortification value, it will take a while to destroy and capture the city. This guy will join the fray, I have no doubts about that, he will gain experience as a result of this. Which is why, what exactly what I need to do, and I don't really need to do anything else with him, really. Whereas this guy, every time he is on the battlefield, he heals my units, 
which is very very helpful indeed. So let's go ahead and attack the city right away. I won't even bother sieging it. And I got to make sure that my this army is the second one to support. It will be. Now apparently the enemy has an advantage, which is really annoying because I wanted to auto battle this battle. What happens if I try auto battling it right now? I'm kind of curious, but at the same time I know for a fact that the results will be pretty poor. All across the board, I probably lose like entire all of my armies. And this army, quite frankly, should not be giving me too much trouble. Especially because those guys have zero initiative. It will be so easy to stun. I'm not going to risk it. F it. I know it's not the best entertainment value, but... There's no way I can lose this battle. Even with the enemy having fortification values, I have much higher initiative than those guys. They will not be able to stun me. They will not be able to use their beams. They will not be able to do a single effing thing. As a result, there is virtually no way for me to actually lose this battle. And I disagree severely with the AI's assessment of my strength versus the enemy's strength. Yes, it would take a long time, yes, my foragers would take a lot of damage and many of them will die. No, there is no chance I can lose this battle. It can end with a draw, I can give it that and nothing else can happen. How can you act before my foragers? You have an initiative of zero. This guy has an initiative of 19. I can blame Bugs, because keep in mind this playthrough is starting from a previous version. So I guess this could be it. Whatever, in such case I don't know exactly which unit will act first or which will not, because anything can happen right now basically. So you actually stand over here. And every unit I have, literally every unit will be told to attack the Harmonite, because I don't know who's going to act. This is kind of weird, so let's have a quick look. Okay, now it works. It was, it was just a simple bug. I do bet that it is a direct result of me playing a game that started in the previous patch rather than the, the new patch. I stress this out a lot because some of you might be watching this video before deciding if you want to purchase this game or not. This is not really a good example of what you should expect from this product. This video has is only posted for tutorial values and maybe some mild comedy values every now and again, rather than any actual information of it. That's not true. You know what I'm trying to say, okay? Also, by the way, the fact that my units sometimes do one damage, that's mostly to you, Jimmy, because I'm not sure if you noticed my reply, because I can't reply to you. I don't know why I disabled this option. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> I do love you. You are a viewer and commenter, which is... Which means that you are a nice person. But regardless, I would really love to be able to reply to you. So just please, reply button would be helpful. Please. Anyway, I guess I can reply to you in a video cast. So it's not really a big deal. I'm just joking. But what I do want to say is that in no way should there be a situation possible where I can deal one damage. Unless my unit can deal one or two damage. Basic. On uh, basic. With, so, because... I did explain exactly how the battle mechanics work in this version, maybe I didn't do so clearly enough or something, but there is no possibility that you can deal one damage, unless a situation like I described arises, because you can only deal 100%, 50%, 200% or 0% of your damage, and your damage is listed right here. So unless it is equal to 1 or 2, you cannot deal one damage. As simple as that. So it is a bug related to this game being played on a previous version rather than the newest version. That is my understanding of this issue and I'm going to stick with it. Alright, I have my units on the southern flank, focus on the Harmonite over there. This guy, where is he standing? Over here, alright, so somebody stunlock him so he doesn't do too much problems uh, to give me too much problems and everybody else just focus on those guys. Looks stable enough so far. My hero is going to continuously heal the foragers that, atta that attack first so that they do not take any extra damage. You all focus on what you're supposed to be focusing on. And my hero, you should just try to focus on getting there. Because he will probably try to deal some extra damage to this Harmonite. In fact, I'm just going to prioritize targeting this Harmonite right away. Because this is exactly what I want to use my hero for. He is kind of like my Necodrone right now. Alright, then I think I'm good to go, so let's go ahead and finish the other phase and focus on my Empire while those units are just trying to kill each other mercilessly. Again, one damage is not supposed to be there, unless... I need to have a quick look at one of my abilities again. I'm, I just had a little idea. Because this unit does have the ability called Low Damage, 
and that's minus 60% attack on unit. But 60% of 32 is not 1, is it? It certainly is not. What if it's a, no, even if it's a 50% of the 60% of 32, that is still not 1. Hmm, very interesting. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It is probably just a bag. Let's not think too much or too deeply into it. It's not something that we should focus our attention on. Alright, you may be noticing that the frame rate is kind of poor. That is as a result of a bug that is uh, present in this version of the game currently, which will be obviously fixed, at least I hope so. It is not even caused by Amplitude Studios, it's caused by, uh, you know, Unity Engine on which this game is played. And as a result, you can see that the frame rate is abnormally poor. I'm sorry, this is not something I can fix in any way, shape or form. I mean, I can fix it, but I would have to go into 5x4 resolution for that. You don't want it. Uh, that's how I posted my videos at, when I started this channel. People generally said that it is annoying because almost everybody uses the... What is it? 10x9? I don't remember. Something... No, 16x9. <laughs> Not 10x9. 16x9 resolution and when they see 5x4 they freak out. Which, by the way, is my native resolution. I just you downscale it to create an illusion of me playing on something that is actually 16x9. I do it for you, even though I personally prefer 5x4. I know I'm old school like this. Either way, please continue healing those guys and continue killing each other because there is very low likelihood of me wanting to change anything. Enemy militia actually have a very high initiative for some reason, but that is not something I should really be bothered with. Alright, as this battle is going forth, I cannot truly go for anything other than the basic uh, ob uh, options. I could go for extra science on Empire and I'll go for just that and apply the changes. By the way, you can see that I have all possibilities unlocked. Two theories, either it is again a bug caused by me using the wrong version of the game, or it is because I have won the game, which again should not be possible and should not give me access to this, but again, I don't care why, I'm not going to use ability, I mean, uh, Empire plans that I should not have access to. I know which era I'm in and I'll stick to this uh, knowledge. So let's uh, minimize all of those pop-ups. Do I want to do anything specific in a city? Well, I do want to rename this city, so let's go ahead and do just that. I have a perfect name for you. It is a reference and a connection that only I and three other people... No, four... No, three other people will be able to make. <laughs> those are the best, aren't they? So there we go, Rachel is growing nicely. I did feed her with some extra... What is it called? Food stockpile of camera. So she'll grow in 110. She's a big girl. Not like that! Come on, stop thinking about it this way. Jeez, you perverts. Perverts? What pervert? I don't even know. My mind is sometimes working really strangely. And I just noticed my hair kind of went away. It's probably because I took some painkillers though. Let's be entirely frank. I did take some painkillers. So that's probably the explanation to that. Can this battle end already? I mean, we know the end result of this battle. It will be inconclusive with me losing some units and the enemy losing some of the, some other units as well. And me regaining some units while the enemy is also going not not to regain any units, but they will gain health, regain health of some of the units. And generally things will, go, will become fairly complicated and messy and whatever. So just kill as many people as you can. I trust you, you will do a good job. There's not even any planning required. The only reason why this battle is played in manual is because I did not dare to play it in auto battle. I can with the one damage, it's so weird. I don't fully get it. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, because you're probably too bored to actually watch this battle to its completion, is pause the recording and come back once this battle is over, because frankly it is not entirely interesting. And because I can only record at, at a very, very poor frame rate, I'm simply going to stop recording it, because if it, is, if it was at 30 frames per second, I would say okay, but it is not at 30, it is below that, which is not acceptable by my standards. It's something that we have to accept, because we have no other choice, but... I mean, I don't know, this violence is kind of enjoyable, I just see people killing each other, mmm, delicious. But I'm here for tutorial value and knowledge value, and if you want to know, if you want to watch violence, oh, trust me, once the game goes out and I show you the new faction, there will be plenty of violence. So, yeah, I will just pause recording and be right back. Alright, as you can see, the battle has ended inconclusively, as I said, but many of the enemy armies have actually been destroyed, I mean... I only killed two units, but I have damaged all the other ones as well. 
Harm one Harmonite remains with quite a lot of health, but the others also went quite low. The enemy, of course, next time attack will re regain all of his fortification bonus, however, his armies will be even weaker than they were already were, and despite this fortification bonus, I was able to deal quite significant damage to this army. So next time I attack, I should be able to win. Now, you may make the argument that I have lost a fo lot of foragers doing so, but as a Necrophage player, I do not really have to fear the consequences of such actions. Partially because I did regain some foragers, only one this time around, because unfortunately it was very difficult to kill the enemy units and at the same time also infect them. I was only able to do so once with my Predator. But additionally, look at the amount of cadavers I gained from this battle alone. Now I have another stack pound that I can use for one of my cities, which is rather amazing. And again, I have so many foragers from Proliferators alone, I don't really have to fear such consequences. Additionally, before starting this battle, I had a look at the military tab, which is something you should always do. And as you can see, the enemy's military strength is far below mine. Of course, mine will also drop this 10 as a result of losing a lot of foragers. But regardless, I know for a fact that I do not really have to fear the enemy in any way, shape or form right now. Additionally, when checking the enemy military strength, we also should go ahead and have a look at Dust. Because Dust can buy you an army if you use the marketplace, and this army is usually fairly cheap and very effective. This is slightly worrying, because the Broken Lords do have a lot of Dust, and in multiplayer, I would think twice before attacking. In fact, in multiplayer, I would certainly not assault the city, I would simply besiege it, and in fact, send all my armies to all the other cities, and besiege them one by one. However, this time around I was comfortable doing what I did as a direct result of uh, me fighting an AI and additionally knowing that I have an advantage so big that the enemy likely will not be able to arise back again from what I just did to him. Which is why I was this ballsy and why I actually decided to attack head on. Additionally, I have two heroes in the nearby in the near vicinity and looking at the enemy cities, I do not see any other reinforcements coming. I know there are four towers over here and another Harmonite in here, but those cities, they do not harbor a lot of units either way, and those units in those two cities are already damaged, which means that I do not really have to worry about anything, as I said before. What I could do if I'm in a tight spot is buy out a unit from the marketplace. Oh, I can't because it's from the old era. I miss old patch and I don't have mercenary market. Technically speaking, that is. All right. Now, I do want to advance the next era to gain access to better equipment and tech and whatnot. So what I'll do is just go for, that's actually a good question. I could go for Imperial Highways. It's actually a fairly important uh, upgrade, even for, I used to have meritocratic promotion. I certainly did have meritocratic promotion, I'm not just imagining it. Right, a lot of things bugged out, didn't they? It's okay, it's okay. Well, if I don't have it, I certainly do need it. Because without it, I might be in quite a bit of problems. So, let's grab it ASAP again. <clears throat> again, I continue this playthrough despite the errors, because, quite frankly, it does lose its, lose its informative value, I would say. Because I stated out what the problems are with this patch. That's kind of annoying, but it's okay. And I can still tell you how you're supposed to play, despite the fact that there are some minor inconsistencies. If you are annoyed, however, by the bugs and errors and whatnot, and you want me to just end this video cast or start it anew, I mean, not video cast, this playthrough, then you can say so. If enough people claim the same thing, I will restart it or just flat out end it outright. If this is your decision, I will adapt. You are my audience and I value your voice a lot. If, however, you have no problem with what you're seeing right now, then just again, I'll continue doing what I'm doing. It's fine. So, what I'm going to do now is use those foragers to just annoy the enemy as much as possible and besiege the enemy city, forcing those towers to go ahead and interfere, because otherwise this city will start generating less dust and science, which are abnormally important for Broccolots even more so than for other factions, because, quite frankly, without dust, they can barely do a single thing with their empire, as you are well aware. What I'm also going to do is go ahead and finally conquer this city, but I'm most likely going to do it off-camera again, because, as you have seen already, this takes way too effing long. Unless I have a big advantage in... Oh, okay, I do. I don't know how those guys can reinforce the city, but looks like I'll be able to conquer it outright, and even kill the enemies quite easily. Very nice, I like what I'm seeing. The enemy city is captured, it looks kinda okay, it is going to lose some population if I don't help it, 
But regardless, I'm quite satisfied with what I gained. And because there are a lot of frivers nearby, I can easily go for fish farm. I'll buy it out when I can and move in to attack the next city. This time it's the enemy capital. Now, if the AI is truly playing on the endless difficulty, it will do its best to protect its capital. I mean, best, uh, but what is also possible is that, well, because we are in this other version, or rather in the game that started in the previous version, AI may be a little bit dumb ish. So we'll see how the AI reacts. I do hope I did not freeze the AI by continuing with the same version. This might be what is causing those, version, uh, those bugs. Hmm. And if that's the case, then really this playthrough would indeed not be the best one. Uh huh. I don't know. Again, I rely on your opinion to tell on your opinion to tell me whenever I should end this playthrough or not, if I should continue or not. Firstly, I do want to see if this Hamonite will move. Yeah, I know. An error. Go away. I do want to see if this uh, if this Hamonite will move because, by all accounts, it should do anything really. The AI should start act. Oh wait, something is happening because okay, it did make an army. It did move slowly. AI is active. So. With the knowledge that the AI is indeed functioning and fighting me to the best of its ability and certainly I can confirm that judging by the score hype and probably the research progress as well, yeah, the AI started just jumping ahead in, pro in science, which is a clear sign that the AI is indeed working in endless difficulty mode. Everything is progressing as it should be in terms of AI. So AI is fine, it's not having any bugs. There are some other minor bugs in this playthrough, so please judge it yourself if you think that those bugs are too severe or not. If you believe that they are, let me know. If you believe that they are not, let me know. And based on that, I'll continue or discontinue the series. And if I do discontinue it, then I guess I'll renew them after the new faction is out and after I'm done with this playthrough. If, however, I am to continue those particular series that you're watching right now, I'll just intertwine them with the new upcoming series. Alright, I think I made myself clear, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.